recognize. Our center is would like to recognize that we all live and work on indigenous homeland, specifically the ancestral homelands of the Cayuse, Umatilla, Walla Walla, and Nurse Pierce people. This acknowledgement is a way to show our respect and understanding <clears throat> that this land carries stories of indigenous people's struggles for survival and identity through the effects of colonization. Our Center East is a nonprofit organization headquarters in La Grande, Oregon, and its mission is to inspire, enrich, and interlace Eastern Oregon communities through the expression of creativity. The writing project is one of the many projects here at ACE, where we interlace the Eastern and Western part of our states in the written and spoken word. At the end of this program tonight, we will have an open microphone opportunity for those of you who would like to uh, do that. But without further ado, I would like to introduce tonight's feature speaker, Tashan Lauders. Formerly of Omaha, Nebraska, where they played defensive back for the Nebraska Nighthawks mm -hmm. of the YNFC until their transition, Tashan Phoenix is a non-binary, transmasculine, creative, and spoken word artist now living in Portland, Oregon. They have been featured on the social audio app Clubhouse by Love and Lyrics, as well as My Gwen's Entertainment, and can be seen at such local Portland venues as the Queen's Heads and Alberta Street Pub. Mm. Virtually, they frequent Portland's Lamlandia, mostly open mic hosted by Literary Arts, as well as all the lovers left alive, a weekly open mic hosted by Buddy Wakefield. And let's give a warm welcome to Tashan. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, my name is Tashan. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm joining you virtually from San Francisco right now, um, where I'm here for work. Um, but I'm excited to share you, uh, uh, share some poetry with y'all. Um, so uh, I got a couple of poems that I got picked out and um, you can um, uh, visit my website. Uh, it's mindstateless.com uh, where I have my poetry and some videos as well. Um, but I, I often write about um, my experience as a, as a trans masculine person or my experience with um, the church. Um, and that's kind of where I'm gonna get started here. Um, this evening. So this first poem that I'm going to share with you, it's called um, This Apostle Bleeds. I once believed it was impossible to clothe oneself in tenderness. I had seen hatred rage in hospitals and street wars effervesce. In church, I found myself seeking salvation. When a man of God made the declaration, the father he followed so diligently wouldn't accept someone like me. I had to come to, term with, come to terms with that. I was sad, I was angry, internally hoping. Almighty maker shake the earth with judgment as heads spin and skulls crack on pavement. From heaven came to tame wicked hearts, send sparks flying like flaming wings as earth responds with a reverberating yes of all things. My heart went into hibernation. As to why, just guess. I wanted acceptance of this typical hypocrite searching for the golden ticket, the idea of Christ the son, the only one uncaring of cool drove erotic an erotic knife into my veins because i knew i'm not the same i felt a lot of pain from the self-inflicted audio of negative words slicing me up as a place a price on my own head i wondered if the holy spirit conceived of the agony perceived heathens perceive from the words of self-appointed messengers crucified died and i was buried in an unmarked grave i was left to sit on the wrong hands of judgment while laughing lips continue to stand under the protection of the assumption I was a disease or an infection, waiting for my sentence, I knelt and repented for the shivering eyelid, quivering in fear as the guilt of my identity burdened me like a heavy sin, beat sticks and shed tears on my own back. 
Cut me some slack with a sharp blade. I blade. I was made to self-destruct and mutilate. My hate was raging to break out of this cage. Drove rusty nails bent and beautiful into my palms. I felt guilty. Painted these skies blue with blood and envy. Followed the rainbow to the sea and felt a lot of pain, even though it wasn't me who filled their hearts with hatred. I had to love myself. I had to heal myself. I had to find my own salvation. Oh. Um, when I was about 18 or 19, I belonged to this church. It's called Christ Community Church in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, I joined them uh, because they, they had asked at the end of a sermon, if anyone had a gift, um, if they could come forward, um, if it could be used you know, for God. And I was like, I do, I do spoken word. And so I did poetry with them and um, got out of practice with their band, performing at the church, and it was great. But then one day uh, after, after a, a session, uh, the leader had asked me, uh, you know, just how my day was going. And I let him know that I was kind of stressed out because the leader, um, or the sponsor rather, of our GSA, uh, he uh, was pressuring me to be the president. And I didn't want to be president because um, I had all of these ideas that I wanted to, to bring um, to, to the organization or to the group. I wanted to bring in these guest speakers and um, create these resources and um, these touch points and trainings. But everyone just wanted to have a good time. And so um, uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to plan parties. And that's kind of where they were at. And um, after that, uh, a little later, I got an email asking me if I was queer. And I was like, yeah, because I thought, you know, I thought everyone knew that. And uh, so he, um, he told me it was a mistake to have me in leadership and I could no longer participate. And I got really depressed after that. Um, dropped out of, out of college. I was going to Christ Community College in Nebraska at the time. And um, yeah, so it, it was just not a really good time. And I just picked up poetry again um after I transitioned last year um so that's kind of where that piece birthed out of um this next piece is called the fire I created the process began in flames ignited by a dead name a skin shed like tears morning flesh they developed an attachment to Detached, removed with top surgery, a double mastectomy to affirm my identity. External entities clung to the fat like blood vessels. Clinging to the notion I was floating on the notion I was an island in their ocean, unaware they have yet to have discovered the deepest parts of me. Too bright to see, too hot to touch. Burned like books with my ghost inscription. This is a benediction. The journey that begins in flames transforming the burdens into blessings stripped down to the root shock and awe to the shackles tired of filling in cracks i built a new foundation i found safety and stability within myself free from shattered dreams and scattered puzzle pieces spreading seeds of anxiety and fear like dandelions climb up my sick pull the thorns of trauma that fester out and clean the root Flames lick them clean, cauterized and hypnotized with sedatives. Gloved hands rose like solar panels, scraping my plexus with scalpels. Shining bright lights tracing mark, tracing mark lines at the base of my chest, lifting my self-esteem, morphing my dysmorphia into euphoria, leading me to a world of paranoia where everything is working out for me. Where I am confident and comfortable to open my heart once older back together like a tin man with a mouth with a scarecrow. Freed from the nest in my throat, suffocating, stunting my growth. Allowing me to recognize the person in the mirror. Clearing my vision. Blurry at first. Eyes blinded by bandages. Aided by vests. Compressed like my composure as I acclimate. Straighten my posture to elevate. To contact and connect with my higher self like tissue. The source of the issue. I had to separate from parts of myself to be complete. Uh, so I'm a non-binary trans masculine person. Um, so I've been on hormones for about two years now. And I had top surgery about two years ago as well. Um, so coming up on that on anniversary in July. And um, 
uh, that poems is, is a little bit about that that dream. Uh, this next poem I'd like to share with you is called um, called uh, Lick Your Tattoos. Sky blanketed by midnight star, like dripping like raw honey, sparkling stick to my skin, make me glow. She said, I'm gonna lick your tattoos. See if they taste as good as my fruit stripes. I told her this flavor lasts. It's not temporary sweet zebra cake. It'll take you through dark nights, blinded by passion, riding a Harley Quinn like a roadrunner. I've got scars, I'm not lying, that stretch across my chest like a desert. Not because I'm desolate, but because my views are unobstructed and only those who don't fear the heat or natural beauty of canyons can rest their head upon my grains of sand. I am made of many tiny pieces, grand enough to support, shift, or exfoliate your skin. Be soft or coarse at times, but I only want to help you shine. Polish your posture, stand proud in your power, praise you like the blood red moon. Howl in the wind, a baby born in Tucson, under two sons, one of God, the other Evelyn. Angels of heaven, prophesied the placenta caught by the snout of a wolf of an infant will be damned if not saved by your grandmother's hands. Is your mouth big enough to fit my origin? Hormones and heavyweights can't make me as big as my destiny, so when you see me, know that I am not a monolith. One of many, I can tower and surround you like mountains, pound my passion into you, like beach waves crashing into you. Washing away the wicked that weighs you down, hanging from your lips in a frown, a line drawn with no happy endings. I am sending you kisses and well wishes, written in notes and scales, climbing octaves with claws, open jaws, pouring flavor in your ear. If that sounds good to you, stick out your tongue and begin to lick the lyrics written in my flesh, freshly baked with organ weed. Uh, so uh, I'm I'm from I'm from uh, Tucson, uh, or I was born in Tucson rather, and um, I like to weave. Um, I really like wordplay, but I also like to weave piece, pieces of myself into my poems. Um, and my grandma likes to tell people about how God told her that uh, that I was going to be born. Um, my mom was uh, got pregnant with me when she was uh, a teenager. And they told her that no one had to know about me. And uh, were, uh, her doctors were supporting her in an abortion. So my grandma believes that's why uh, she woke up in the middle of the night uh, and God told her I was born. So that's why I, I have that, that, that piece in that, in that poem. It's a little bit of my origin story. Uh, this next poem, this next poem is called Reborn a Butterfly. Uh, something that I op often, I guess, compare myself to in thinking of the, the transition and the process of uh, the, the metamorphosis, you know, um, uh, going into the cocoon, um, the, 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 moments of, the moment of pause, uh, of darkness, and then the fights, the struggle to break out. You asked me where this butterfly came from. How I came to be this creature so many perceive as soft and beautiful. This concept born from a tiny egg stuck on a leaf like writer's block. But this body didn't bear four beautiful bouncing wings. It was just that. Bare. It was dull. It was small. If you looked hard enough, you could see me through the shell I was cased in. Unlocked, I emerged as I hatched on the page as I hatched to eat the page. Words carved in ink crumbled as I chewed and gnawed hungry for lines and letters, shedding skin like tears as I grew and developed until I was ready to rest. You asked me about my pain. Some thought I had given up. Some thought I had died. As I went in and shut everyone, everything out. I wrapped myself up tightly, tongued and tempered, consuming myself as I evolved into a new self, reflecting and renewing my spirit to emerge after days, weeks, months, to celebrate the birthday of a corpse. Wrinkled and crinkled until filled with blood, I am reborn. So that's reborn above fly. Uh, this next poem, is called uh, Coming to the Realization. 
And it's really just coming to the realization that we're capable of anything. Dare to daydream as you ride your nightmare out of the void. Hot breath like steam blasting from a screaming teapot. Trotting hearts keeping cadence with the cicadas. You're closer than you know. There's no stopping, only trusting that spirit will guide as you stride steadily with evil sight. Visions in the distance become attainable. Wings fluttering like eyelids, action coupled with imagination, the new AI. There's nothing artificial about this intelligence. Strapped with resilience, pushing through the resistance, hold on tight. Don't forget to breathe, ruby red eyes stand your ground. As you pursue the more than that the eye can see with the strength and purpose. Awakening to the human experience of a spiritual being. As the sting of a red hot poker of a bee's sunset pierces your spiritual body. Inhale the cool evening air to feel the contrast as hooves collide with concrete. Keep riding into the night like a ceremony, celebrating the connection to all that expands beyond. Crossing the ties that bind to find the truth. Wipe away the sweat from creation like stardust to see the source. The love and light you've been seeking is already within you. Release one more deep breath as you come to the realization you're limitless. This is as coming to realization. Uh, this next poem is called uh, Slow But Steady. And um, uh, it's about how I hold my, myself, I've held myself back at times um, and I've been my own, my own blockage and I've allowed my perception to hold me back. Sometimes I keep myself stagnant, stuck in a loop, talking, walking in circles, rings that'll never be worn. I can be larger than life or a microscopic pipe dream all in a matter of seconds, it seems. Luckily, these moments are few and brief these days. No more blackouts, lost time, months gone by. I stay present. I am grounded. I am secure. Most days. I harvest pure raw energy from my cord and stand proud in my power. Electric waves. I ebb, I flow, fluid like gender, airbender, water bear, Aquarius with a furious passion to protect my, pe protect my peace and my people, my friends. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Please continue to be you. Don't give in to the temptation to compromise. I am speaking to me, myself, and I. Say goodbye to the painted faces in the crowd. False smiles, a clever disguise. When I allowed myself to feel inadequate, before I realized I could wield my sword and my shield, this tongue that can cut and caress, it can kill or nurture, sworn to protect, never neglect, most days. Actions speak louder than words, and I can't hear you. Mute mouse painted on a blank stare. You need, you'll need a U-Haul to pick up the boxes you try to keep me in. I confess. I've squeezed inspiration from stones as I sorted through scattered dreams like puzzle pieces, like the dra last drop of toothpaste. But it only takes a fraction of hope to plant a seed, one day at a time, a steady pace and a little faith to achieve the growth of a garden that will feed me for lifetimes as I trace lifelines mapping out my future. I give myself compassion as I champion on. Even the creator needed a day of rest. Thank you. Uh, this next poem, this next poem, sorry, video, okay. Oh. Um, this next poem is called Life is a Dance. And uh, it is, well, I guess I'll let this one kind of speak for itself. It's a lot. Life is a dance. She is not my God. The first to see me in my bloody birthday suit, she saw a pink and blue primrose punk that she could whisk away, addressing her dress like a facade she wore with confidence. Dipped and draped with frost, her touch was ice cold on my red skin as I screamed, taking my first breath of fresh air, she tasted like peppermint. A candy cane hanging from the tree of life, 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, once satisfied by the sacrifice. I surrender to no one. Life is not my master. I choose who I become. So we learn the language of compromise. Her erotic tongue and elixir to stir up my feelings as I'm healing from the wounds inflicted by radioactive audio. There were no angels in that city, only corpses. She gripped my hand, led me to the center of the floor, hand on chest, sliced with scalpel and scorn, cut away skin and tissue, pulled out my heart, polished it with spit and the salt of my tears until it gleamed like an emerald. Tapped it to test that it was as solid as gold, then hung it from the ceiling like a disco ball. I see how my light shines. I see how the pain was necessary. I have moved into a life of gratitude. I am grateful for another opportunity to get it right. I surrender to the universe. I listen with eager ears. I feel with my entire being. I bear the truth, let it flow like water. As we spin and swirl, I place my hand on her back. Her fingers brush the nape of my neck, just light enough that I can feel her nails. As if to let me know she could scrape and scratch, but chooses to be gentle. I embrace the unknown as I lift it and look into her eyes. I walk into the unseen behind the eyelids, trusting that I will be supported, knowing that everything's gonna be all right and dance. Well, that's that poem. I, um, oh, thank you. I am on my, I am on my phone. So I am trying to like, I, I'm not able to really see the, the chats or anything here, but, but thank you. Um, I know it's like 30 to 40 minutes. I do have more phones, so I can always share more. Or if you want to stop me at 30, cause we're at 730, just let me know. And I'm good with whatever. I think you're doing great. Um, we would love to hear some more. Okay, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share. I'm happy to share. Um, so um, uh, I, this, this poem is called uh, Mind State Unfair. And I, I really like wordplay. Um, and so uh, this was just really fun for me. Um, it was actually, there was this line um, during one of Buddy's, um, one of Buddy's open mics, it was someone had said, um, unless your clarity stop me now. And I thought that would be a great prompt. So I wrote this poem from that. My mind is racing like a carnival of red flags made from hand-me-downs and touch me not tied in lightning tongues licking the cotton candy crust from my eyes. I've been sleeping, dreaming of wheels of fortune, a wealth of worry put to rest as I put the past behind me, like a kick me sign, waiting for the Zodiac killer to return with Saturn to teach me a lesson. Whacking my heart like a mole, peeking out of my hobbit hole, hoping it's safe after taking a pallet to the head. Not knowing well enough to play dead, I rise again like my roller coaster pulse, creeping up and crashing down with a sugar rush into the house of mirrors as I reflect on what happened. The clown I've become and the giant teddy bear of a prize I aspire to be. I spinning like teacups, my tunnel vision powder like funnel cakes. As I take a deep breath, straighten my posture to prove that I am tall enough for this ride that makes stomachs transform into butterflies, gliding into golden gates of euphoria built between bronze knees, sliding with ease with wet sticky fingers, a gummy yummy gobstopper, gleaked and geeked all over gumdrops, nerding out, gripping onto thighs like tickets, like the hope the risk is worth the reward. Bodies bumping like cards as my words spin in circles as though I never learned how to string together a sentence like beads. Words braided like pretzels, say cheese, as I put myself into gear growing nervous. Flesh blush and blushing Neapolitan ice cream scooch with sweat salty as curly fries. Twisted like my twilt to whirl hair, defying gravity with afro beats picked like candy apples. I comb through compliments knowing that I can't juggle so I struggle to masquerade. This chest is open for a muse, meant to sit upon my carousel for each revolution around the sun until the fire runs out. My confessions are for sale at the concession stand with free refills. 
My root beer floats taste like earth, drowning in tears, clinging onto faith like an island, where Mary goes round in rotation, igniting the joint custody of my chair like a baton, spelling hello in smoke signals from behind the booth as I watch her eat a snow cone. Unless your clarity stopped me now because I can't see how it's fair. And that's that poem. Thank you. I am going to pull up, actually, I might have it so my notes. I'll pull up another one to share. Oh, let's see what I got here to my poems. Ooh, I love this one. I don't know why I didn't pick this earlier. This one's called Now Playing. I think of the percussion of heartbeats that pulsate with desire within the chest of their bodies for something, and I wonder if it's something I can relate to, if I have felt that longing too. If in spite of our differences, our bodies each echo a similar song, water dripping teases of light in our crystal cave of, in our crystal cave of fear and chaos of joy and peace, where we find comfort in sanctuary, a familiar place that requires welcome into my requiem, a dream only illuminated when shadows cast away their nightmares and allow themselves to be embraced in eccentric trust. Lacklustered or fuck flustered, I'm not all sparkle and shine like Sunday morning. Some days I'm numb. I forget what it is to feel others. I cry feeling too much playing with my imagination, contemplating a comfort I don't always believe in anymore. More than just nerve endings were severed when I cut away the past. My chest may be flat, but my scars are bumpy. These thoughts can seem intrusive, so reclusive. Even adjusting my perspective, I find mere truths that haunt my memory. A nod to nostalgia as my headphones play melodic melodies of memory, an erotic tickle of bass and eardrum. I think of the percussion of heartbeats. Oh, uh, though I fear my words that fall from my lips may be hazardous, I bear my cross with iron fists like my maiden name. Let's end that poem. Uh, this next poem is called, um, let's see, If I Were a Butterfly. If I were a butterfly, would you want to kiss me? Would you think of me when you get a funny feeling in the pit of your stomach? If I were a butterfly, would you follow me with your gaze as I fluttered throughout my days? Would you wonder how each flower tasted? Would you wonder if I savor their sweet nectar or if I long to land on your lush petals for a sensory experience so transformational, my wings would blush. My blue hues would shine purple, ultraviolet, like a plum, as you bit your thumb. Don't hold your tongue any tighter. The knot that you twist can't count the number of times you miss me. If I were a butterfly, would you trap me in a net? Or simply sit and be with me to live out our days in the garden? Would you lure me in with your light and feminine fragrance? Would you guide me to the base of your flower? If I were a butterfly, I'd see you through 6,000 lenses, 6,000 ways of beautiful compound into one being. My antenna tuned to your frequency, on air, on high, as I rest my thorax on your blossom after drinking you in, your pollen coating me down to your abdomen. This next poem is called uh, Feeding Time. Uh, I think this was one that I wrote, um, born of a prompt. Um, last fall, I virtually came across a whole bunch of poets, and they, um, which they would have these virtual writing rooms with these prompts. And um, so I wrote, I wrote a lot last fall using those prompts. Feed me your poetry with your hands, no silver spoons. I want to lick lyrics from your palms like psalms. Let me pray with, for your blessings and suck the sovereignty from your fingers as the flavors sing amazing greats and tap dance on my taste buds. I want you to feel my saliva as each word marinates my soul. Sweet communion. The lifelines that God creased into your flesh hold secrets that couldn't even be uttered in a confessional. So holy is your, scrub, is your scripture that my eyes roll blindly into my skull as you fill me full with your language. I savor each syllable, every synonym sentence, every synonym seasons your sentences like cinnamon. Sugar, honey, iced tea, I'm still hungry, insatiable. I'm greedy for your goodness. Did I starve before you serve me? 
It's not my first meal, but I would die if it's my last supper. Cut my chin as I chew. Coax me to continue. Do you like it? How does it feel to see me consume your conscious contemplations, your ink blots and calligraphy? Do you like it? When I clean your hands of the letters, punctuation marks, the tears and coffee stains with my tongue and lips. Are you ready to eat? Because I'm feeding you next. I think I'm enough time for one more experiment. 38. So let me pull up another one here. Let's see. This one's called Doing It Scared. And it was actually inspired by a friend of mine. Um, they had written a poem <coughs> and I was, <coughs> excuse me, I was inspired by their poem. It was um, in thinking of um, what's it like being uh, an optimist in uh, a pessimistic world. And uh, so that's what gave birth to this poem. Again, it's called Doing It Scared. Knowing that you can fall. Trusting that you'll fly, risking it all, that's faith. That's why your goal is optimal for adventure. Crash into the realization you're limitless and infuse yourself with fear. Become the steady pace. Find your rhythm as you swing from trees like hips colliding to consummate the union between you and your higher self. Inhale the gorilla glue that sticks us together like saliva sealed to smoke, burn like fire. Fill my lungs as they echo cries of mourning like church hymns. Hallelujah. We lived and left a birthmark on a cheek that resembles your youth. As time slips through fingers, as the sun pours through the trees, when the day is done, a child will rise like the moon to illuminate the darkness left by your absence. No one can replace your spirit, but they can hope to shine just as bright. Reaching into the gut of the galaxy to excavate the bones of ancestors, red and blue stars gleaming like gems, shooting blessings across the sky within our minds, all in a matter of seconds when thoughts collide. Thank you. And that's 40. So I think that's my time. So thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it so much. That was wonderful. Thank you. Uh, everybody, if you have questions to for Tashan, please do. Um, I have a question actually before we get started. I I hear a lot of the religious background, and it sounds to me like Catholicism mainly. And I was wondering how is that filtering into your poetry, and the motivation there. Uh, so um, my grandparents are actually, and I get I say my grandparents because like they're kind of they kind of they're kind of who raised us, uh, me and my my two younger siblings. That my my mother, my mom has three kids, <coughs> um, and um, so they raised us in kind of like the Lutheran Church, and um, I I reminisce like I think back to it, but I don't actively practice it or anything like that. I'm more so, I guess, spiritual now, um, rather than like Lutheran or, or Christian. Um, but the experiences um, definitely influence my poetry. Ultimately, um, I guess I'm just a believer in love. My grandpa, um, one thing I always say about him, who he just had back surgery on Monday and he's in the hospital. He gets to go home tomorrow, yay. Um, but he really taught us about love and a Christ-like love is what he talks about oftentimes. So love is, is my religion, if anything. Thank you. So please ask questions to Tashan. Tashan, you, you mentioned uh, at the outset that you, you've just recently kind of come to or returned to poetry um, only a couple, you're only a couple of years into your spoken word career. And I wonder if you could just say more about how you, you know, like a butterfly emerged into this pursuit and kind of what the, um, what the motivation, what the, where the passion stem from and what sort of the, the growth and challenges have been, I know it's a wide open question, but you know, you, you, you exude such confidence and passion and it just seems like you've been doing this a lot longer. Um, 
So I want to hear more about that. Yeah. Um, so I started writing when I was younger. When I was in about eighth grade, I got an assignment. I had to write a poem for class and my teacher liked it. <clears throat> Encouraged me to keep writing. So in high school, uh, I did creative writing. I, I got into doing open mics and a couple slam competitions and things like that. And then I stopped because of the church. Um, after I transitioned um, and, I, and I moved, I started, um, I guess, uh, affirming myself. I, I did uh, rising pages, you know, um, Julian Cameron's artist where I, I do that sometimes now, but um, even before doing that, I would just wake up in the morning, write like my gratitudes and my affirmations. And um, then I would join um, <clears throat> groups where um, people would just say their gratitudes in the morning. And like, that was like our little kind of support group. And I started then writing affirmation poetry. Um, and kind of just adding on, cause my, my affirmations, I started affirming myself, like it became lists and then it became poetry. And then I became inspired to write about other things again. And it just kind of picked up from there and kind of, I guess, kind of shaking off the dust, so to speak. And um, my friends really encouraged me and made me feel comfortable. And uh, so I, I, then it started online, um, just virtually in like, like in Zoom, on Clubhouse, different groups like that. I met other poets. And then last fall, uh, there was a, a local organization in Portland. They're called Ladies of the Rose. They host um, bi-weekly open mics. And I had met them at an event before. So I kind of eased into that. But I'm the only, not anymore, but to start, I was the only person to do spoken word. Everyone else was like singing and rapping. And so I was the odd man out. And I was kind of nervous at, at, at start, but then I kind of got acclimated. Now other people do their poetry. So I just feel more comfortable because I've, I've been in the weird spaces where no one does poetry or really talks about their feelings. They're just singing songs about having a great time, you know? Um, so that's kind of what the last year has been. And then I've just been seeking out more opportunities to do poetry because that, that was my passion, but then I kind of got derailed and I didn't really have a direction. So I'm just trying to, to, to share my, my voice again and um, sharpen my pen, so to speak. Thank you. I'll ask a question to, to Sean. Thank you. That was that was amazing. Uh, um, uh, I, I think it was the second to last poem you talked about uh, uh, secrets. I, I'm going to butcher the what your your language, but the se uh, secrets too secret for the confession booth. And I uh, uh, it took a, it took just a second for that one to sink in. And it's just amazing. That's a brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, on a couple of different levels. I thought that was great. And I think in you had the, the poem uh, again, I'm forgetting the names. Uh, it was the carnival atmosphere one. And uh, did I hear did I hear you use the word gleek in a poem? I thought uh, uh, <laughs> like that. That's amazing to hear that. And then uh, I just started watching uh, uh, the Avatar cartoon. So uh, you had an Avatar uh, reference in one of the poems, I think. Uh, uh, di didn't you? Did I hear a, like a Airbender uh, reference or something? Oh, yeah, Airbender. Uh, yep. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but my question is. Uh, uh, what, who, who are some of your biggest artistic, uh, influences? Like what, what, what are you listening to and, and, uh, and reading and that, that kind of stuff? Uh, so, um, well, uh, buddy, buddy Wakefield is a, as a poet. Um, I, I really enjoy his poetry. Um, and Ebony Stewart, I just read her book on the flight here to San Francisco, actually. Um, and uh, Andrea Gibson as well. Uh, they're a phenomenal poet. Um, uh, there is, um, but as far as like my poetry personally, I can't say necessarily that an individual person influences it. Um, I just write, um, but I do really just enjoy people who are able to kind of put themselves in their poetry, like their personalities, they have their own way, like the way that they perform, you know, they're, 
um, their body language, you know, what they use with their hands or their facial facial expressions and, and their voices or their mouths even, because, you know, in some people they perform, they might do something with their mouth um, and just their, their unique style, which just really inspires me to like make it like my own um, and just really own whatever it is that I'm saying. Um, and uh, I listen to mostly like, uh, I guess, hip hop, Ciroc is one of my favorite rappers. She's a rapper out of Atlanta. Um, it's S-A hyphen R-O-C. And I guess you could call her like a conscious rapper, but her lyrics are phenomenal. Um, people have said that um, her work should be studied. Um, it, it, she is a phenomenal lyricist. Uh, and uh, I definitely, uh, definitely look up to her. I was able to see her a couple of months ago. She came into, into town. Um, but, um, but yeah, those, those, those mostly, also, I really like instrumental music, uh, like jazz, piano, cello, saxophone, guitar. Um, yeah, that's, that's my answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a question also. It has to do sort of more with the, almost the persona that you have, which is obviously, I mean, I was very appealing. I mean, I loved your, I loved your poems. The language was, was wonderful, but I'm wondering, one of the things that strikes me is that as you talk about your past and as of course, as it's revealed in your work, there's obviously been a lot of pain and you know, you certainly have a lot of things you could be angry about or bitter about. And yet what I really got, the feeling I really got from it was this joy of your actual existence and having been able to survive certain things and now maybe even flourish. So is that a sort of progression you've worked on or is that just more like your natural spirit coming through your words? Um, it's definitely um, something that I've worked on. It's not necessarily natural. Like I used to be so much quieter and just, I wouldn't really talk to people or interact or make eye contact or anything like me even two years ago wouldn't recognize the me now. Um, but in going through the, I think the transition really um, for me in just being able to finally just own everything, like do whatever I want. Like, I mean, within reason, like I'm, I'm a responsible adult, <laughs> but um, just, just be me and not do what my, what my grandparents or my parents or society or anyone else tells me to do and just do that. But with um, in transitioning, like with the surgery and being in bed for, for months and not being able to move and just the pain that I experienced. And um, it's like, so, so like I had top surgery um, and then with that, like there's the drains, um, there's, you have drains for a few days afterwards and the pain is just so excruciating and I like almost pass out um, getting out of bed or trying to go to the bathroom is just so, so horrible. It's like nothing compares to that. The fears that I had um, or that the, the, the shadows that I created like in my mind, you know, nothing was as bad as what I actually felt. And then in thinking of, of that, like I can go through anything now. And so definitely grateful like, for what, like what happened because there are lessons that I needed to learn and in, in conversating with like other, other queer folk or, or trans folk, or even just people who um, uh, they, they have kids or maybe their kids have friends or just like within their network, being able to relate to those people or being kind of like a teacher of sorts has really, I guess kind of made me be proud of everything that I have gone through. So I am able to rise above and then also just the practicing the, the gratitude and the affirmations, like I'm not held back in the way that I was by either myself or other people. That was such a powerful answer. Thank you for that. I, I wanted to ask, and I hope I'm not, I'm asking a second question. So if anyone else, wants to go please please go ahead but i'm already going so um i you know i'm interested about in your process there's such a flow you know obviously to spoken word into your to your writing and i wonder you know what's like the germ of you know is this is it a line that comes to you are you on the move i can almost imagine and i see you're outside like kind of moving around the cityscape right now um and i often feel like walking moving especially 
can be in poetry. And then, and then also I, I noted in your, you know, your short bio that you were an athlete and a really, you know, impressive athlete. And how do you think about, maybe this is this like a, a tangential, but, but related question, does, does, does athleticism and spoken word kind of overlap for you? Uh, so <clears throat> with the, um, I write so many different ways. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's kind of like um, a toolbox. You know, you have so many different tools and there's so many different ways that you can use them. And I think of like poetry, language, words, like kind of the same way. Um, so sometimes it's just, um, it, it might be a, a, a line that comes to me um, or even just like, a, not even necessarily a line, maybe a couple of words. And I think that sounds really good. And um, I might, I don't, I don't freestyle. I'm not one of those poets, but I might kind of play around with it as I'm, I work from home. So as I'm going throughout my day or I'm walking around my apartment or whatnot, um, building upon that. Uh, so I do that sometimes uh, to, to build on a poem, then I'll write it down. Sometimes I'm, give, I'm given prompts. Uh, sometimes there's something that I, I do want to convey or say, and I sit down like with that intention. I'm like, I wanna write a poem about this thing. Um, and, um, and then also sometimes just when I'm walking, I do think of lines. I have this poem, it's called um, A Letter to Lily of the Incas. And I wrote it as I was walking downtown. Um, I just took notes, things like I would hear something, I would, I would see something and I would just write down what I saw or what I heard or what I thought of. And then I had a poem at the end of it. So just a toolbox of things. And with the athleticism, um, so I grew up in a small town in Laurel, Nebraska. It's a podunk town. There's like a population was like less than a thousand. It's a square mile, real small. And like in a small towns, sports are the thing to do. Everyone does it, everyone goes there. So I was kind of like raised in that. So it's like sports was my first thing, soccer, softball, basketball. And then in high school, I didn't do it because the coach, um, uh, I called me a boy and I, I, I was kind of getting bullied at that time. People were calling me like tranny, he, she, things like that. So I didn't go into sports. But in 2018, I was really wanted to tackle my mental health because I, I didn't really leave my apartment. My depression was really bad. My anxiety was really bad. If I did leave, if I went too far, I would get like really bad anxiety and it would hurt me physically. So I would do these challenges and, um, one of my challenges was to go to this fitness expo where I signed up for football practice. And I just went as like a part of a workout and I just had fun and I connected with these people and, it, and it, I ended up joining the team and playing professional football for a year and I got to travel and it was great. It was really just a push of what can I do and um, stepping out of my comfort zone and connecting with other people um, is uh, not, it's necessarily, I don't think there are some creatives uh, that were on the team, uh, but uh, football and poetry, I guess they don't really go hand in hand. I, I do have a poem that I kind of mentioned it in um, just because it's fun, like with wordplay, but they're kind of two separate things. They don't necessarily overlap. And I do, like I, I run, I walk to work out and things like that. But again, it's just like a I can do all things, so why not? <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Are, are there any other questions? Um, we also have time for um, open microphone if anybody's interested in doing some reading. Good, it, uh, right underneath on... Um, Reactions, just put, raise your hand, and then we can, um, there we go. Ryan, Rose, which really is Carissa, <laughs> you guys. Um, I feel like I, I maybe should come up with something since, since <laughs> reading, the reading was so good, you know, I, I feel like I, I, I got to flow a little too, but I'm scared. <laughs> So Ryan, Carissa, Teresa, Mary, do you have something you want to read? 
raise your hand and uh i'll read something i don't okay <laughs> do we want to are we going to take a um short break is that how it normally we normally take a little short break uh if people want maybe about uh four minutes five minutes so you get your paperwork ready or whatever so sean thank you so much for that thank great you. meeting and for all those insights it's really Pleasure hearing your work. And where are you right now in SF? Um, I'm at 25 Lusk. Okay. Uh, so I'm, 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 I'm not too far from the, the bay or the pier. Nice. Looks, looks like the weather's good there. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. So okay, we're gonna take a break and come back. In about four minutes, we'll be back. Thanks. No. If we the don't need, there. Yeah, we don't need to record this part. Just the question. I want to. I want to get that in for. Oh, Audrey. okay. We won't record the the open mic. <laughs> Ask one more question. Ryan. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead and what? Ask one. Ask one. Yeah. I want to. I want to make sure Tashawn is. Uh, is uh, Tashawn can I ask one more question? Yeah, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Not right now, anyways. Well, now I now I feel bad. I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, uh, I say, can I? Can I interrupt your dinner? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, you can interrupt my dinner. It's all good. <laughs> I I had I just had one more question that I was uh, starting to form uh, uh, earlier, and I didn't get it. I didn't get I didn't get it fully formed. It's probably still not fully formed, but that's um, okay. I am curious about uh, about how how what how you gravitated towards spoken spoken words specifically. I think about I think about. Uh, 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 my writing and stuff. And, and, and sometimes I will, uh, I'll try to explore different forms or, or very rarely different genres, but, but, uh, uh, spoken word is, would be a leap, you know? And, uh, and so I'm curious, I'm curious about, uh, about why spoken word versus other, other types of writing. And do you write in other, do you, do you uh, explore other genres or other, other forms of, of, uh, poetry and stuff? Um, uh, well, I guess I just did what I, I was kind of guided towards, um, my, um, in high school, my creative writing teacher had a podium and every Friday we would get to go to that podium and share, um, something that we wrote our, every week we had to write 10 pages. Like that was, we'd have other things, but we always had to write 10 pages a week and then we could share something on Fridays. And that was like our, our open mic in class. And then he, he got us into a slams. Um, there were competitions with other classes. Matt Mason, I don't know if you're familiar with him, um, but he's from Omaha and he came and he kind of worked with us and got us into that. Um, things like the National Poetry Recitation Contest. I did that when I was, um, I guess, maybe 16 or 17. Um, uh, but that's what I was geared towards. Yeah. Um, and then as far as other styles or forms of writing, yes, I will try it um, just because it's fun and I want to learn and I want to know because I just write to write um, whatever I create, however I create it. Like, that's just me. I don't, I didn't, it's not something I necessarily study. I definitely admire those who can identify different formats and styles of writing and, and do all of that. But like, I, I don't know that. I, I just I just write, um, but I I have been uh, pursuing and seeking and participating in more workshops and things like that 
so I can learn specific styles to, I guess, uh, tweak my craft a little bit, um, but not on the regular. It's not something like common practice for me. I know you. Uh, I know you talked about it a little bit earlier. I may have. I may may have missed something you said. Uh, do you uh, primarily start composing your work uh, uh, out loud and then and then write it down in a notebook or on a uh, on the computer, or do you or are you uh, at the beginning of the process? Are you are you writing stuff? And you talked about walking around the apartment and and you know getting you know uh, spending time on a phrase or something, but but as far as the process goes, does it start with, with writing or does it start more uh, out loud? Um, it's both. I guess you could say it's, it's a hybrid of the two. Um, I do both. I do both. Um, okay. Yeah, I do both. Yeah, okay. Th thank you. Thank you for- Sounds like your time. high school teacher was amazing. Uh, 10, 10 pages a week, that's a, that's a big ask. That's, that's what we need though. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I, if I ask that much for my, my university students, I might get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean. That was awesome. So we're moving over. Thank you. Uh, we're moving over to the open mic. Uh, 